Hello, this is Stephen Metcalf. This is the day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, glory to God. What a privilege we have talking about the presence of God. I'm so excited. I'm so blessed. I can help myself. The joy of the Lord just overwhelms me when I come on here and just start preaching and just talking about the message. And I know that God is blessing you too. Hallelujah. Always a pleasure to be with you here and just listen and share in the eternal word of God. Today, as we discuss the presence of the Lord, part five, I want to discuss and I want to talk about the beginning of miracles in my life and ministry as a result of the manifestation of the presence of God. Because yesterday, you know, we discussed surrendering to the faithful one. And the day before that, we discussed that Jesus is the object of the presence of God. The presence of God is not an atmosphere. The presence of God is a person. And his name is Holy Spirit. And he comes to make Jesus real. He comes to make Jesus real. So today, I just feel led by the Holy Spirit to share some important truths about the Holy Spirit and just to encourage you. You know, Jesus said in John chapter 14 and verses 12, he said, If you believe in me, the works that I shall do, ye shall do also, and greater works than these shall ye do, because I go to the Father. Of course, Jesus, talking about the Holy Spirit, knew that these disciples and these apostles that had followed him would one day do exactly what he did, not because of their own strength or their own faith, but because of the Holy Spirit whom he sent on the inside and then whom he sent on them and upon them. And over there in Acts chapter 1, verses 8, the Bible says, you know that you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me and you, you know, in Samaria, you shall go. In Judea, you shall go. In Jerusalem, you shall go. And unto the uttermost parts of the earth. And child of God, that is still true today. We are still reaching people through the gospel in the uttermost parts of the earth. So wherever you're listen, listening in from, my God, God loves you. I love you. And I know you get as excited as I do just listening in. Hallelujah. And uh, being blessed. Well, let's, let's begin with a simple definition of a miracle. A miracle is an effect or extraordinary event in the physical world that surpasses all known human or natural powers and is ascribed to a supernatural cause. Such an effect or event manifesting or considered as a work of God, a wonder, a marvel, a wonderful or surpassing example of some quality. A miracle, therefore, is a divine intervention of God and a divine interruption of God in the course of nature. You know, God, in deciding to bless his people, has always set aside natural laws such that he would bless you and me. Think about it. A miracle is nothing but Jesus setting aside natural laws that he would bless you and me. And how I love the Lord. Hallelujah. And I know you do. You know, in, in talking about miracles, 
in, 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 in my life and you know, in my ministry. And those that I serve with, those that you know the Lord has blessed us with and such faithful and wonderful people, men and women, who have given their lives, literally given their lives, to serve the Lord and to preach the gospel. We see so many miracles, and that is not an understatement. We see so many healings. We see God just touching people, changing lives. But sometimes people ask me, when did it start? Well, I'll tell you the truth. I wasn't born walking in miracles, that's for sure. But I've always been a pious child. I've always been a child who is to himself and had an unusual drawing to the Lord. Even when I was young, I was told that when I, when I was about six years old, my brothers asked for bicycles. My brothers asked for, I have four brothers. Um, my brothers asked for toys. I never asked for anything like that. I hounded my dad for two weeks. Buy me a Bible. Buy me a Bible. And my father was perplexed for a long time. And after he bought, he bought me so many gifts. He bought me a bicycle. He bought me and I refused them. And I said, I need a Bible. Something was happening to me at six years. And I did not even know what was happening to me. And well, he acquiesced to my demands and one day he came back home with a good news bible i still remember that bible yellowish in color with the sun on its top and guess what i only opened one scripture for three weeks john 14 15 if you love me you will obey my commandments now that puzzled him the more and um well, it, it, it happened like that. And I read that Bible more than I read my schoolwork. I read that Bible. I just, whether I understood it or not, I just, something just drew me to, to, to the Bible. And now I understand it was the Holy Spirit. And at nine years old, in a field, I remember the day like it was yesterday. My God. I remember the day I saw him. At nine years old, playing in a field, I had suffered so much psychological trouble as a young child. And I'm playing by myself in a field and other children are in the field also, but I was by myself. And a voice, I just had a voice say, look up. And when I looked up, it was not the sun that I saw. It was the son of man, Jesus. His eyes like fire. His hair. Like the sun itself reaching out to me and he said son I will use you one day I will use you mightily one day I have called you for a very specific purpose in the kingdom by the time I already knew the Lord I was already saved I didn't know much and as soon as it came, it ended by child of God that was imprinted on my heart until the day I meet him face to face. At 10 years and a half, I joined a youth, a youth missions, you know, and I went to a neighboring country, Tanzania, and preached to Muslims. We saw a good number of Muslims saved, over 6,000 9,000, not exaggerating. We were there for a month. 
What a harvest. And what was so funny is that on the last day of the crusade, something happened. The last crusade we had and the last day we had for the crusade, something happened. The pastor took ill and his fellow pastors had never preached a crusade before. So they were timid and they feared. And they said, who's going to preach? And my, my peers and my friends, I was the youngest there, 10 and a half years. They said, no one wants to preach. No one wants to stand before 6,000 people, Muslims. I'm telling you, I felt a desire to talk about Jesus rise up on the inside of me. And I said, I'll preach. And everyone looked at me in dismay. And I said, I'll preach. The pastor, who was many, many times larger and bigger than me, took his coat and put it on me. And he said, what are you going to preach about? I said, the blessing of Abraham. I didn't even know how to preach Jesus. So I went there. I looked as ridiculous as a cow at a new gate. And I stood there and the whole place just stood still. They thought a big preacher was coming, just stood still and I began to preach the gospel. I began to preach the gospel. And I'm telling you, almost everyone that heard me came in front to receive Jesus whole place was packed. And that was the beginning of something that would totally change my life. At 11 years old, I remember it was July, I was in school, boarding school, hallelujah. Wednesday in the morning, we're being chased out for prep. I had just woken up and I had a mighty visitation of the Holy Spirit. And the Lord told me, son, from this day, I'm going to use you to heal my people. I'm going to use you to bring healing and miracles to my people. Eleven years old, and I didn't even have a clue what was happening. And that day, it had never happened. They emptied all the sick bays in school and they emptied them in the prayer room and something happened that as a child it just changed the way I look at life. I entered there and a force just entered that room an 11 year old child doesn't know much. A force just entered that room. I could feel it, everyone could feel it and when we began to pray just calling on the name of Jesus, one after the other, the lame walked. Those that were deaf began to hear. I remember there's a lady that suffered, was born with asthma. She was healed. Another one was partially, mentally deranged, but partially it came and went. He was healed. Oh, what a moment. It marked my life. I remember in school, the miracles got so intense. Some used to call me the young Benny Hinn. <laughs> that something was happening. And I didn't know that it had something to do with my future. The miracles happened until I was 14 years old. And they stopped. God is a God who hides himself. You've read it in the Bible. And I wondered what had I done to God. But thank God I came upon uh, across a book, The Anointing by Benny Hinn. And I understood that the price has to be paid to walk in the anointing. Not to get it, but to walk in it. The Holy Spirit filled my heart and I began to seek God. I just began to seek the Lord. You know, 14 years old. Everywhere I went, I just sought God. 
And then it happened, child of God, it happened. Twenty-five years, I'm done with university, and the Holy Spirit speaks to me. Remember I said, I will use you to bring miracles to people. I waited so long, I thought God had forgotten about it. But child of God, he is faithful. Hallelujah. He is faithful. And I remember, I prayed for the deaf and they didn't, they, 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 nothing happened. I prayed for the blind and nothing happened. But something happened at 25 years. That anointing was back on me. Hallelujah. And I had done ministry. I've done ministry all my life. But something happened. Something new happened. That anointing to heal was back stronger than ever. And it started slowly. It started with a trickle. If you've read Ezekiel, I think chapter 47, it starts with a trickle at the threshold. And people started getting healed of minor ailments and minor ailments and progressed to some serious ailments until, my God, until the cancer started falling. The tumors started falling. The deafness started leaving. The blindness started leaving. My God, and I talk about it, I feel, I feel tears just coming down my eyes. How faithful he is. How faithful Jesus is. And looking back, I thank God that he met me at nine years old. Child of God, I say this to tell you it's not too late. It's not too late to surrender to Jesus because the presence of God, the presence of God is everything you'll ever need. And I don't say this to boast. I just say this to tell you that there is something about the presence of God that unlocks your destiny, child of God. There is something about the presence of God. God has called you into the kingdom. He said to those people, Matthew chapter 10, verse 8, heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out devils, cleanse the lepers. My family didn't understand it. The people around me didn't understand it. My parents were surely not working miracles, I'll tell you that. My brothers didn't know what was happening. But now they understand. And the place that I live has become, it has become natural for, for, for the people that live with me and my brothers to hear that a lame man walked in and he got healed. And someone with cancer walked in and the report came back negative. And not just that, and even the small ailments. Is Jesus still real today? Yes, he is. Is the presence of God still real today? Yes, he is, because he's the Holy Spirit. Does God still do mighty signs and wonders today? He still does. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. And child of God, I know you also have a story. But when we surrender to Jesus, he will take your life and he will do something with it. He took the life of Peter, fresh off the sea, and he did something mighty with it. Tomorrow we continue to talk about the miracles, because you cannot separate miracles from the presence of God. And he has told me, take my healing power to the world, and tell them about me. Thank you for listening today, child of God. God bless you. And I love you. In Jesus' name. Amen.